Welcome to Free Speech Nation with me, Andrew Doyle. This is the show where we take a look at culture, current affairs and politics. Coming up on the show tonight, should Rishi Sunak have backed down on his net zero plans? We're going to have a feisty debate shortly from the leaders of the Climate Party and Fair Fuel UK. And as the video platform Rumble rumbles on after rejecting government calls to demonetise Russell Brand, we'll be talking free speech online with co-founder of Fair Cop, Sarah Fillimore. Plus, we'll be speaking to a women's health writer who's been censored for using the word woman when she was asked to contribute expert quotes to an article on periods. And of course, myself and my fantastic panel will be answering questions from our rather beautiful studio audience. Uh, my studio guests this evening are comedians Paul Cox and Cressida Wetton. Exciting week for you, Cressida, because I don't know if our audience knows, but you have been living on a boat for a long time. Five and a half very long years, yes, Andrew. Like and this some week... Sort of Cartoon character, like no, a rosy like cartoon character, like <laughs> somebody with a plan who's a plan. who's working towards the property ladder. Yes. and I live in a flat now. A flat. So it's been a, it's been a really yeah. nice week. Yeah. Having very long showers. Yeah, it's those the GB news money has enabled <laughs> you. To you grifter. Right. What about you, Paul? Has you know you're living in. You know you're in London when someone gets cheered for living in a flat. Yeah. <laughs> that is madness. Well done, Chris. Come on then. Tell yeah. us about your lawn. How's that? My lawn's going? great and great. Does anyone know about my lawn? No one knows, Paul. No. Well, and I check guess me out. They don't care. <laughs> Let's talk about it anyway. Yeah, it's kind of green and out of the back of my house. Yeah, yeah. Is that it? Yeah, yeah. No, it's out the back anecdote. of your house. But you can see it on uh, Instagram once a month. <laughs> OK. Paul, enough of Paul's wild <laughs> anecdotes. I don't think the audience will be able to cope. Let's instead get some questions from the audience. Our first question is from Roger. Hi, Roger. What's your question? Hello. Can dogs be non-binary? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's an interesting question. Uh, this is because of Paw Patrol. Well, Paw Patrol has... There's a, a sort of spin-off to Paw Patrol. Kids like it. It's a kids show. Uh, and they've created a new character who is a non-binary, uh, I think, skateboarder, skateboarding dog. Uh, now, do you have any views on this? Oh, yeah. I have some views on this. OK, go on. Uh, I mean, there's a lot to take in, isn't there, skateboarding dogs? I mean, all, all dogs are non-binary to me. I mean, I never... <gasps> they, well, they are, aren't they? Um, I walk a lot. I do. I like yeah. to walk. I mean, I know the appearance would suggest otherwise, but just imagine <laughs> if I didn't. And, and, and when I'm out walking, I'll often like pet a dog and talk to the owner, and I'll end up misgendering the dog all the time. I go, yes. how is she or he? And they get quite upset. So I think most... Well, the dogs get upset. No, the dogs don't care. <laughs> no. The dogs don't care. They just want a bit of a ruffle, a bit of a scruffle. Yeah, but I don't think they are <laughs> actually non-binary. The no, the dogs aren't dog. non-binary yeah. and they don't care. And I guess my point is, I need to make one, Andrew, because that's why you've asked me here. Yeah. My point is that it shouldn't really matter. This is a cartoon yeah. at the end of the day. So these are, these are dogs that are fighting crime on skateboards. So uh, that's quite a leap anyway. <laughs> so is. I mean, so we, we can take... Two Two okay. views on this. One is that it doesn't matter, and yeah. one is that it's ridiculous to continually get children involved in this debate. And right. I think that's where I come down on at the end. Well, that's my point about this: is that I think that it's it's this weird indoctrination, right? Which I find a bit odd. I mean, it'd be it'd be like the dogs sitting down and discussing queer theory or something <laughs> well, like that, and exactly. you would sort of think that's odd for the dogs. It is odd. It's it's for adults, isn't it? It's for or at least you know people are a lot later than people watching cartoons. I think that is far too early. I'm happy to introduce skateboarding dogs, but not yes. dogs. Questioning their gender. But the, why? Why this constant politicisation? Is it because activists are going after kids, effectively? Well, it's looking that way, isn't it? A little it? bit. I mean, well, I mean, there was. It's an interesting. There was that. You know that cartoon Bluey. Yes. Uh, there was a big article in the Pink News about Bluey complaining that there weren't enough. Uh, well, queer characters and um, uh, they described dog. And there, there weren't any dogs of colour. And, and, <laughs> oh, and this wow. is about a. a there was a blue dog on Bluey. Bluey is blue. Yeah. So there were dogs of colour. <laughs> I mean, th but the, this... so for there to be dogs of colour, they'd have to give some know. other attributes that they view as of colour. I, well, exactly. Other than colour, they would. I mean, <laughs> I just think it's a bit—it's a bit ridiculous. But, uh, <laughs> do you have any views on this uh, yourself? You just think, yeah. <laughs> you think it's just rubbish. But that's fair enough, fair enough. Well said. You basically covered all of yeah. it in, in one sentence and we spent the last two minutes rabbiting on. OK, well, let's get a question from Andrea. Where's Andrea? Hi. Hi. Andrea, sorry. I thought you were an Italian man, <laughs> but actually you're not. Um, should schools pander to the wishes of a pupil who wants to be treated as a member of the opposite sex? This is a big deal, isn't it? This is the, uh, the news this week, uh, the Equalities Watchdog. 
the Equality and Human Rights Commission, the EHRC, has basically said that they made a mistake. So they used to say that if you refused to refer to a child by their chosen name and gender, that that was a form of direct discrimination. That's what they said. Lots of people pointed out, didn't they? Uh, lots, uh, lots of campaigners said, well, that's not the law. And often these bodies get the law wrong. And that's a problem because people look to these bodies to find out what the law is. That's now being clarified. Now, I think this is really important, Paul, because, you know, I, I know lots of teachers. I used to be a teacher. Yeah. I, have, I have one teacher friend who's been told that he needs to, in the school reports, use the birth name of the pupil, but in the classroom, speak to the pupil with the, the name that she now wants to be called by. In other words, lie to the parents. Yeah. And that's coming from the headmaster of the school. So that's a problem, right? Well, of course it's a problem. I mean, first of all, we should never pander to kids. No. Um, <laughs> no. Well, no, we shouldn't. Do, you know, I mean, I say this, uh, you know, I gave my daughter 40 quid this afternoon to go shopping. I don't know what she's going to buy with it, but there you go. Are we talking, talking about money again? Sorry, guys. But um, she was out of the house. Well, she was out of the house. I don't know yeah. where she is now. Yeah, I gave her a vape and said, on your way, I'm going yeah. to do GB yeah. News. And now there'll be food on the table. But, yeah, but, yeah it's, it, this is a very serious matter. And at, the, and at the heart of it is gender dysphoria. And it might as well not be, because we've, the, the, whole, the whole debate has been taken over by everybody becoming whatever they want to be at any given time. How can you get someone's gender right when people that are gender fluid wake up with a different gender every day of the week? How are we supposed to guess? That and does if, happen. And, if you're, and it does happen. And when, you're in, when you're in a school situation, surely you're just teaching the pupils. And you shouldn't really matter anyway. And if they come in and they're called Geoffrey, let's just assume they're a boy. Well, sure. It's actually very difficult as a teacher, I know, because every new year you have to learn a hundred new names. You have to learn... At my school, they used to give you, uh, like, little photographs with the names, so you'd, so you'd learn them quite quickly. If you have to learn a whole set of pronouns as well, then it's going to be basically impossible, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. I mean, this must be a huge relief for teachers up and down the country. For yeah. We're walking a tightrope before. This is, this is great, isn't it? It's what we've been calling for. It's taken a long time. Yes. But finally, uh, it's one less thing to worry about. I well, guess. also, it's, it's clearly largely a trend, you know, and particularly amongst teenage girls, a lot of them identifying as, as the opposite sex, um, which, and it's escalated absolutely hugely. But you shouldn't necessarily pander to that, should you? No, absolutely not. Well, it's a crude analogy, but you don't tell an anorexic, yeah, you're right, you're, you're pretty porky. You know, you don't... You Do don't, you not do um, that? No, that's... Well, have you, I mean... Have you met Lewis Schaefer? What we did at school... No, have I met Lewis Schaefer? Yeah, <laughs> okay. Lewis, have... that's exactly what he does. Um, <laughs> yes. No, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not appropriate, is no, it? No, it's and... not. And, it's, and it is difficult for the parents, but I'm glad this is getting clarified. The government has still yeah. yet to publish their guidance guidelines on this. I mean, I don't know why they're dragging their heels on this. So schools are basically making it up. They don't know what to do. Yeah, and that's right? really unfortunate. And I think when you don't know what to do, you should just go back to common sense. Yeah, good idea. OK, well, we're going to go on to a question from Nigel. Hi, Nigel. Is rambling racist? Is rambling racist? Nigel, I don't know if you've noticed this, but every week there is a story about this, how the countryside is racist, uh, how uh, the b botanical gardens at Kew aren't sufficiently homosexual. <laughs> I mean, all, all, this, all this sort of stuff. It's, I, true. I, it's just so stupid that, actually, you know, I, I kind of think, when will this just stop? I mean, when it stops, I won't have a show. <laughs> I think that's a price worth paying, yeah. to be honest. It's so ridiculous. There was, there was a, a Pink News again, they did an article about a group of queer hikers, right? They call themselves queer hikers, and they said, because up until now, access to the outdoors has been really difficult for, for gay people. I'm like, no, we can walk outside. Wow. <laughs> We've been doing it for years. In fact, gay people are particularly good at that. I would say. <laughs> I wouldn't like to comment, because no. when I go hiking, I don't know if the person's gay or not. No. I don't but think about it. Ethnic diversity, I mean, look, anyone can walk in the countryside. And it's, I, I worry that this is really patronising. It's very patronising. To people suggesting there's a barrier there. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it, yeah, patronising's the word, isn't it, if not full-on full racist. Right. I mean, the idea that you would tell somebody that their life's going to be different, you know, to that level, it, it's yeah. just absurd to Yeah, me. you won't I, be able to go rambling because of you're the wrong skin tone. Utterly ridiculous. That's, that's never happened, does it? And yeah. the idea, I mean, you, when you, within this article that was written this week, it talks about the geographical locations in some way that's been contrived, that they've deliberately put footpaths yeah. that are 3,000 years old in some cases in places they knew in 3,000 years' time would be mainly occupied by white people. Right. Uh, and, and, then, and then on the other hand, they say, well, there isn't many in the middle of Southampton. You're like, no-one goes rambling in the middle of Southampton. No, it's got no. nothing to do with the colour of the people. Yeah, it's just it's that, this sort of a hyper racialized society. That it's always nonsense. It's looking for looking for problems where there aren't any. Absolutely. Okay, we've got a question now from Solomon. Hi, Solomon. Hi, Sir. Right. Uh, my question is: um, Is it okay for parents to take their children out of school? Yeah, this is a big. Well, this debate goes on and on. I mean, this is about school holidays, and it is tricky, isn't it? Because 
sticking to the school holidays uh, means that, well, it's more expensive. The holidays aren't as good because everyone else takes their kids away. Solomon, do you think parents should be punished if they take kids out in, during term time? I'm not sure about that, but it just depends on like the particular reason. Like if it depends on the um, reasoning, like yeah. it's to do with sickness or it's to do with like um, emergency reasons or something. But not just you know, to save money, then you, you save money. But it depends on the reason, like what the teacher determines, like what the pupil is um, going through. But in some circumstances, but yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. what do you make of this one, Cressida? I mean, I, I I only go on holiday when terms. You know, I, I don't like children. I don't want them about. So understandable. The understandable. Last thing, the last thing I would want. It's for parents to this, this trend to catch on. Well, you know? it's mad, isn't it? I mean, when I was a kid, we didn't get a day off unless our arm was broken or something. And yeah, the, you had to break your own arm. Yeah, you did. That's what we did, Andrew. Yeah. Um, I just, I think it's hilarious that parents have kids and then save 200 quid or something by changing <laughs> the date. It's like, kids are expensive, aren't they? How much does you a know? child cost? I think it's quite a lot. Like, in the course of its life, it's something like a million pounds or something. I think you could get a very nice property if you didn't have a well, child. Yeah. Is, is, yeah, that's the alternative. Yeah, now you've had how many children? One. <laughs> just one, actually. <laughs> One, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, that you're aware of. Oh, here we go, yeah. And, uh, and, and <laughs> the problem with that is, you know, you are now poorer as a result and your life is depleted. Uh, well, that... <laughs> it's, it's not as you, Have you been reading my diary, Andrew? <laughs> I'm just saying you would have a more uh, wholesome... Uh, enjoyable existence if it weren't for your child. Well, that's not true at all. No, uh, um, no not for me it's not, no, because... You actually uh, like yours. Yeah, I, I really do love yeah. my daughter, um, and, and she does enrich my life. I mean, she drives me nuts, and she costs me a lot of money in vapes, as I said earlier. Yeah. But uh, she, have, the, this debate has come around because of the pandemic. That's why it's come around. Okay. Because pe kids were told, and parents as well were told, just to go home. And then they stayed home for ages, and it seemed to work OK. Now they're going, why do we need to bother going back? Yes. And th it's been difficult to change the cultural view on this. I see. I see. Interesting. Although, if you'd have had a whippet instead... Oh, I'd love could, a whippet. You could be wearing ermine now, and, like, oh. just be, like, dripping in jewels. I would be, yeah. I'd, yeah. Yes. And that's what <laughs> this is you how would... you imagine me. Just imagine me. With... <laughs> I imagine you dressed like a West African pimp. I... That's how I always see you. You again? You've yeah. been reading my diary, yeah. Andrew. Yeah, OK. Well, we'll get another question now from our audience. Uh, this one from Alan. Where's Alan? Hi, Alan. Hi, Andrew. Guys, uh, with the media reporting the uh, perfect storm... Uh, for the anti-establishment politics yes. in Europe. Could we see uh, the rise of anti-establishment establishment politics in the UK? Well, we probably could. I mean, this is an interesting one. Uh, this study this week was quite astonishing. They're saying one-third of European voters are now voting for populist parties, and by that they mean far-right or far-left, just anything on the, on the extremes, right? Mm. I, 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 I'm not so sure about that, because often the media m misunderstand what far-right and far-left means, and they sort of yeah. they, they, they brand, you know, bracket all sorts of well, quite moderate it, parties yeah. within that. But is it, if it, could it happen in the... I mean, the question from Alan is if it could happen here, but actually our parliamentary system is kind of... Uh, fixed so that you, could, you couldn't have smaller parties rise up. We've got this yeah. first-past-the-post system. Unless we had proportional representation, we'd never get the rise of smaller parties and more coalitions, would we? Well, I never say never. No, not, not as things are now. I mean, but I, I want to go back and define our terms. You know, right. what do we mean by, by far right before we start arguing? Because mm. it, it does seem that... Well, even populist. What do we mean by populist? Well, right. because, because that word is so mistrusted. But what it really means is uh, a political party that appeals to the people. Sounds a lot like <laughs> democracy, <laughs> Andrew. It sort of sounds like well, democracy. Alan, do you have any thoughts on well, this? Well, yeah, populism is actually becoming more popular. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I have a friend who's uh, so far on the left, actually, she refers to the BBC as a far right organisation. <laughs> wow. So it, it does depend on your position within the spectrum to start with. That's uh, hilarious. A lot of people also say that the BBC is far left. In fact, that's the, that's the complaint I'm more often. Well, hear. I think that's normal. It right. depends where your starting place is. If you're starting in the middle, then yes. So if no one knows what these terms mean, that is, I mean, people have referred to the current Conservative government as far right. I've genuinely heard that. Uh, is that people just I think don't... it was in the article. No. I just, right. It makes me laugh. That's so... People don't know what they're talking about. Absolutely basically. no idea. And isn't it just, Paul, that people should read more books? That would be great <laughs> yeah. if people did read more books. But books take a long time to read and people like to receive information in 25-second chunks now. Yes. So if, if, if you just get told in those 25-second chunks something you like to hear, you'll believe that. Do you want there to be lots of smaller parties? Because I actually think the coalition system works pretty well across 
across Europe. I don't, I don't, see, I don't see why everyone's so afraid of this. The only people who tend to want smaller parties are those who, who are on the fringes and want small parties to raise up, which is, which is a very interesting idea. I mean, it would be better to have more than two, maybe yeah. four parties, for instance. We, and we do have uh, uh, more than two parties. Do but we? we? Well, no. I mean, we did have the Lib Dems, do you remember them? Not really. I think. <laughs> I think they'll be back in play during the no, next the election. The yellow ones. Yeah, they were the yellow ones. Yeah. Okay. okay. A bloke called Tim's in charge now. Yeah, but you know, but we, I'm talking about serious parties. You know, so I yeah. think it would be quite good to get some smaller parties up and running. Well, know, the so. benefit of smaller parties as well is they can scare whoever's in power, can't they? They can raise something and bang the drum about it and then yeah, exactly. have a campaign. And well, make... the Brexit party did that. That's what. Yeah. Exactly. And, and actually did make a, a radical difference to the country by existing. So more of that maybe would be interesting. Well, and let's not forget, there's lots of factions within the parties that we got. There's lots of factions within the Tory party, and there's huge huge amounts of factions within the Labour Party. Yeah. Well, the Labour Party seems to me to be two parties in one at the moment. But, you know, anyway, that's a question for a different night.